Hi! Welcome to Sang's Kitchen. I, oh, I'm Sang. I'm the light red cowboy, as you can see from Pink Hair. Um, <laughs> uh, super excited to have you guys in here. I'm going to be making cookies. Uh, as you can see, I pulled up the cookie recipe. This is the coffee biscuit recipe from, uh, well, the Final Fantasy cookbook. Um, everyone knows coffee biscuits because we spam it for tons and tons of gill at high levels. Um, but the problem with the coffee biscuit recipe is they did a very good job developing this, making it accessible for at-home cooks and people that play the game, because um, they had to take in consideration the cooking skill and ability of people that would be buying the cookbook. So it's a really good recipe, but I think it can be better. And I'm a research chef. I actually got a degree in developing products and did it for several years. So I decided I'm going to make two different versions of this. So I'm going to be making the regular coffee biscuit so you guys can see how to make it. And then I'm going to be making my version, which is super decadent. It has brown butter and all that wonderful goodness. And then I'm going to make a more historical kind of version. Um, in the game, it's supposed to be um, served with tea or coffee. It has a light coffee flavor to it. You don't use much of any ingredients besides wheat, sugar, and coffee. So I'm going to do a shortbread version that should be quite good as well. So um, I guess at that point, uh, I need to start getting cooking and making my cookies. Um, feel free if anyone has questions, um, ask in the chat. I'm near here. There may be more people from the FC joining and coming in for fun conversations. Um, and uh, we'll just make some delicious food. Let me get rid of the cookies. recipe. Cookies, cookies. Um, this recipe can be found online. It is everywhere that it was part of their promotional material for the cookbook. Cookbook's not out until November. Uh, definitely get it. Final Fantasy's a fantastic game and they put a lot of love into it and they put a lot of love into this cookbook. Um, I want to cook more from it, so expect to see more of these. Um, and then my recipe is going to be found on my Twitter. Um, I already shared them today, so if you are interested in cooking these, uh, check those out. Uh, they're very quick slap shot written recipes. So they might not be the most uh, thorough kind of thing, but they get a, the word across. And if you have any questions, feel free to watch this or ask me on Twitter. Uh, yes, I would love to do smoked chicken. That would be a lot of fun. <laughs> but oh my gosh, how difficult would that no, be? I have to get smoked. We make a ton of smoked chicken. So much smoked chicken. So to make the coffee biscuit, we need butter, sugar, all that lovely stuff. I got feed sugar. Oh, and we also have a May in the chat. Hi, May. How's it going, baby? She's on the ground. She doesn't know what's going on. It's really intense that it's playing Shadowbreakers right now. Am I supposed to be doing a battle right now? What's happening? Uh, important, most important thing whenever you're doing any kind of cooking is mise en place, mise en place, mise en place. You want to make sure you have all your ingredients. Um, those of you that don't know, mise en place is everything is in its place, the French term. Uh, so you don't want to be scrambling for items in the middle of your cooking process. So, get my mixer, got my butter, sugar, flour, wheat. I'm going to be using King Arthur. King Arthur is a fantastic brand. Highly recommend. Uh, they own their own wheat fields, so that's why you get a good quality product out of them. I also spoiled. I have Mexican vanilla from Mexico. One I cruise. We're going to use good stuff. Um, hot water. Hot water is in the closet. Blue eggs. And chocolate. If you see another random person in the Ukraine, that is my roommate and best friend that I've known for forever, Taki, uh, Takeshi in the game. Uh, you'll see her sometimes. Uh, she's laughing over there while petting our dog. Um, thanks. You can also see her grabbing a dog pepper in the street. Okay. I have everything. You might be wondering, 
thing, why have you had this ready before stream? But I wanted to show you the importance in the whole process from start to finish. Because a lot of people get mystified by cooking, where it's like, oh, everything's so easy, everything's all ready. But like, the process is still gathering all your supplies, organizing it, measuring. I didn't want to sugarcoat things. Yeah, cooking's not like easy. It's not easy, but uh, but it's it's not as hard as people think it either. It's just whenever people run into like a roadblock with it, they're like, "I'm done. I don't want to do it. It was hard for one minute because, and that means I'm bad at it because other people on shows they don't ever have a problem. But shows aren't realistic to life. No, they're not. Oh, I ordered the beet sugar on Amazon. Thing sounds so different. I know I have a different mic for this because I have to come. Um, I had to order the beet sugar on Amazon, but you can also find it in like Whole Foods and stuff. I just don't have a Whole Foods near me. I live out in, I don't want to say Bumble, uh, Bumble Nowhere, but like it, it is a little bit out in the country. Out enough that you don't got a Whole Foods? Out, yes, exactly. I have an HEB, but my HEB does not come with beet sugar. Oh. That happened. We are okay. <laughs> uh, so, the most important thing is, when you make cookies, people need to make sure they soften their butter. Uh, unsoftened butter will lead to uh, your mixer working way harder than it needs to, and it makes it a lot easier for making cookies. Uh, to soften it, just leave it out for like an hour. Probably why my mixer gets mad. Did my mixer just go off on your stream? I wonder how much of a latency I have. Um, it's a couple second latency. Okay, I turned off uh, the uh, the there was like a restriction where I could actually turn up my latency so that way I can um chat in real time with people as best possible. Uh, so hopefully that works. Mm -hmm. um, okay, butter. Uh, it says a cup of butter. Uh, butter, pint is a pound the world around. A pound of butter is two cups. There's a lot of different fun ways to do it. I just know that one of these sticks, one of these blocks of Kerrygold butter, that is gonna be a cup. And now we need our I need half a cup of beet sugar. Uh, it's interesting to note that whoever wrote these recipes for Final Fantasy, they actually uh, utilized the common baking techniques of other countries compared to the Americans, uh, the Americas. Uh, we use a lot more sugar than most recipes, uh, most countries' recipes. So this is actually going to be less sweet than what people are used to. Half a cup of beet sugar, and then a half a cup of brown sugar. Fun fact, brown sugar is not really that special. Everyone's like, ooh, brown sugar is healthier. No, it just means that a little bit of molasses has been added back in. And then uh, a lot of times the difference between light and a dark brown sugar is coloring. Some food companies just cut corners and just add a little bit of food coloring in there, and it's the exact same thing, it trips you, it's not more molassesy. it's just brown. I'm not blocking it, am I? I am blocking it, whoopsies. We'll learn as we get there. I have all my sugars. Yes, milk. Double the sugar. Double the sugar. Actually, I'm doing that for the second one. Kirby wants to know what's the difference between raw sugar and regular sugar you get at the coffee shops. So, raw sugar and regular sugar... Uh, regular sugar goes through a higher... Well, it's not even regular. 
white sugar goes through a more of a refining process where it removes more of the uh, particulates, minerals, and molasses. A lot of time raw sugar is made through uh, turbine uh, uh, sifting or um, spray drying or something else like that, depending on the technique. So turbinado sugar is made by spinning the sugar solution in a turbine to get rid of the water. And so what's left behind is a more dark sugar. Um, a lot of raw sugars are spray dried, so they spray a very fine mist on a slightly warm drum and that drum rotates and then scrapes off the stuff that dries on the surface of the drum to make the raw sugar. Um, nutritionally, sugar is sugar is sugar. They're all the same. You have minute amounts of mineral de uh, differences, but not enough to make a significant nutrition difference. The important thing is flavor. White sugar is very neutral, and so you can eat a lot of it without having an overwhelming flavor sense. Um, but if you eat more flavorful sugars, a little bit goes a long way. And so you don't need as much. It helps you cut down your nutrition while your calories. I know it's cooking. Hello. My mixer's struggling. It might be a little bit loud. I don't know if it's, is this too loud on the stream? My mixer is a little bit of a screener. It's really old. It's a poor baby. It got from my mom. And she got a brand new one. It's really nice. Um, I want it really badly, but hand me down. Uh, it's it's fine though. Like you can hear it, but it's not like oh, overly loud. Milk says your glasses are sick AF. Oh, my my like. On my face, thank you. I got this yeah. from my a family friends. Uh, I like them a lot because they're like caramel colored flavor. Yeah, see, isn't that nice? Um, so I creamed my butter and sugar. You want it to be nice and fluffy. Uh, you want it to lighten up in color, and you want everything to be nicely mixed so you can see the consistency of it. You want to get to this form because what you're doing is creating air mass. Um, and that air is where the egg is going to live to emulsify together, and that gets you a better rise whenever you bake the cookies. Um, I'm going to scrape this out of my bowls. I'm going to be cheesy. I grab my Hufflepuff spatula. And what, we're what in this house? Nerds. You can't see it, but every single wall is covered with nerd stuff in my house. <laughs> You guys are currently in the Lord of the Rings kitchen, right next to the movie living room. Are we like the Council of Elrond? Yes. Uh, there's actually a clock that has uh, the different um, breakfast, lunch, dinner, supper, talkie found on the internet, and it's amazing. And then we also have like a Fellowship of the Rain poster and stuff like that. It's really nice. Yes. Okay. Uh, also, Mrs. Phantom is fawning over the stand mixer, which makes me wonder, Phantom, did you not buy your wife a stand mixer ever? Well, did she not own one? How could might, you not let her own one? There may also be, they might have a stand mixer, but they might have, there's two different kinds. So this is a Pro Series, so it has a lever, it has a stronger engine, but then there's the one that fits a little bit nicer into uh, apartments and other stuff like that that's called the Arson Series, and it has a lever head but it has a weaker motor. And so it doesn't oh, handle things as well. I have a Pro Series because, well, that's what I told my mom. Yeah, yeah I think I have the Artisan one. Does Art its job. The Artisan one's not bad. You just have to do pre-planning. Like you mm. cannot forget to, uh, what's it called? Um, soften your butter, because it just won't do it. They'll just be like, I'm tired. Yeah. It gets mad. I've had to, if I haven't done it, this is not good, but if I haven't done it, I'll like cut the butter up into little slices and throw yes. it in there. Yes, that's exactly how you soften your butter. You just make it in smaller forms so it's a bigger surface area. I have to get hot water. Eating out of what? You have a Are you a What, lady? You can talk, Taki. Say it. It's okay, Crimson. Everybody that's in chat knows you. Do you need to give May water? May May. May needs water. Okay, one second. Let me get hot water and I'll turn it to cold. You can come in, Taki. Are you nervous? <laughs> Taki's here. Not supposed to meet you.
Nate's being a very good girl. She has no idea what's going on. Oh. <laughs> what is this nightmare? Okay. So I got my coffee. So I need my coffee so I can emulsify with my eggs as well. Uh, all my liquids are going to be going in at this point, so I need to make sure that they uh, incorporate nicely. Um, you turn on your mixer, nice and slow, and you crack your egg in. My mixer needs me to hold the back end, otherwise it screams. So I have to crack and then turn it on. Cool. Egg on. This, this is really funny. Talking to you. No, sh uh, I can't tease you. Talking to you, so I'm looking at the chat, but hiding from the camera. Talking no. You can see the chat if you go on Twitch. <laughs> oh no! You can grab it. Grab it. You're having pocky for lunch? Okay. Okay. All the eggs are in. I'm gonna wash my hands first. I don't like having egg on. Egg hands are icky. Anyone have any questions so far? I can see that a lot of chat is happening. Um, I haven't had a chance to read it. The big question was Kirby's difference of sugars. Okay. Oh, they're just everyone saying that they love Taki. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm going to multiply my eggs in. And then I'm going to add my espresso, nice low stream. So this is where the coffee comes in for this recipe, is they use espresso powder. Yeah, my name tag's coming up. And then I'm going to use a splash of vanilla. Here's my secret. I don't measure my vanilla. It says one teaspoon. Good enough. <laughs> uh, Felix is asking if you also use King Arthur espresso powder. I do not. I can't find it as easily. I use the Italian Via Roma. Um, I do love King Arthur products, and I would get it if it was a little bit more accessible in my neighborhood. <laughs> Phantom says they were talking about measuring, and we go until the ants this which tell us to stop. Yeah. So if you cream it right, you'll get this nice creamy consistency. If yours separates, it's not the end of the world. You might not get as much lift, but just keep going. Don't throw it out. It just means your butter was cold. It'll warm up, and it, things will come together. You're gonna be fine. <laughs> Is a fucking bomb. Sorry if my nephew's watching, I just cursed. And our family friendly stream. I know. I didn't take it off of uh, mature audiences just because I know I'm not. I'm bad. You're going to slip up. I'm so good. I'm going to slip up so often. It's going to be a problem. Okay. Next thing we add our flour. Uh, according to the recipe, I'm supposed to sift my flowers together with baking powder and salt. I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> uh, sifting in a lot of recipes is very necessary to help ensure that everything is aerated properly and that everything is dispersed. Um, I'm not very concerned about it whenever it comes to cookie recipes because it's not like anything is going to be in clumps or anything else like that. It's not a super wet concentration, so it's gonna get mixed in. Um, if I had very chunky baking soda, I would definitely sift it, but my baking soda is pretty uh, uniform, so I'm not too worried. Um, regular butter. And then wheat butter. Crimson is asking, what is sifting? Okay, well maybe we'll sift because I need to show Crimson how to do that. 
You know what? I'll do it for you, Catboy. <laughs> oh, you guys can't see our, we have a little like draw drawer system down here with all the bowls. I would like to say that I installed it and whatnot, but it came with a house and I was like, They was just staring at me, and then she was like, I'm done. I'm about to go see what talking about it. And he's like, nah. Yeah. Like, he's being weird talking to himself in the kitchen again. Despite the fact this is my first time streaming in here. Alright. I need... Two and a half cups of flour. That thingy on top of the bowl is a sifter crimson, and you put the stuff in it, and you shake it, and it gets rid of clumps. Yeah. So basically, it's a fine wire mesh that will cause things to break up and be dispersed between each other. And so by using it, I am ensuring that everything is thoroughly mixed in my dry goods. Because if I like use the whisk or something else like that, there's always a chance that something might not fully. Um, all I, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say I had to do that for like macarons. You, it's it's absolutely much. necessary for macarons, otherwise you get lumps of like almond mm -hmm. chunks in there, and that's bad because um, mm -hmm. that inhibits your rise. Uh, yeah, macarons are so finicky. So finicky. Uh, this recipe is really unique, so I like this. Uh, they use whole wheat flour for two reasons. One, the whole wheat flour has a nice little chew to the cookie. Um, without making it too uh, dense or anything else like that. So it gives you ensured a little bit more chewy cookie. It also has fiber, which is the nutritionist and maybe like, yay, fiber. Um, but the second thing is, in the game, you go and get wheat from uh, Kalushia. Kalushia is known for having very hardy grains because that's where they grow all their wine and stuff like that. So this wheat is gonna be the sturdiest, most stubborn wheat ever. So if you don't have like a type of unctuous kind of flour in this cookie. It's not, it's not a copy of this thing. It's just a copy cookie. Um, I also need a fourth of a teaspoon of salt, which again, you know, let the ancestors speak to me because I don't want to measure a fourth. We don't measure things. I mean, you show it on baking for certain things, like the baking powder, I'm going to use a teaspoon. Yeah. Um, but things like salt and Vanilla, if you have that cooking sense, you're good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you want to fix my name You're going to take that over my name tag? Because it's going to become a bit where I'm just constantly having the uh, name tag upgrade. You really don't want to look anywhere to do it. Uh, okay, one second. I'm getting my name tag next. You can stand right there. Hockey's like right here. He's trying to stab me. Like you don't stab him. I'm trying to pin my name tag on. I had another chef coat, but turns out that I haven't worn him so long that it's not viable for today. So this is actually my work one, but I'm covering my work stuff with it. I also had one for when I worked at Sir Latab, but I think I got rid of them because they were not very good chef coats. They looked great, but they were not safe and they were hot. They were very hot. Oh my gosh, what is with this safety pin situation? Yeah, it's supposed to protect me. You just stab yourself? I don't need the You side. mean your chef's coat is not, like, made of Kevlar? Look at that name tag. Chef Sag. I love it. Uh, so it's actually designed, so uh, I'm not going to do it right now, but these buttons... Oh, oops, that's wrong side. This, these buttons are supposed to be easy to take off, because if you get hot liquids, um, like sugar solution or something else like that, it can give you third degree burns through the clothing. Oh yeah. So it's double oh, okay. insulated and also ready for you to strip 
Adam almost knows. So it's funny because, like, you know, there's like a lot of professions where it's like, oh, you can get like stripper versions of it. The, the normal chef clothes are stripper versions. <laughs> uh, I don't need help. It's just like, and, and I, oh, is she digging? He's digging. Uh, so everything's in the bowl for sifting. We just give it a tap. If you look here, you can pop. Can you see it on camera? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Oh, you can see a lot of it in there. Mm -hmm. This helps carry it. And also, for the case of our whole wheat, you can see that some of the bran is getting removed. I'm actually going to put that right back in because I want mm -hmm. the nutrition. Um, so at this point, you can try to add your flour a little bit at a time. I find that it doesn't really help much. Um, the only thing it helps prevent is the flour flying up in your face. I feel like I'm going to get that anyway, so. Yeah, I have like um, one of those like covers that go you put on, on like the a bowl. bowl. I want one. Yeah. So uh, Crimson also wants to know what Bran is. Uh, Bran is the outer shell of the wheat kernel. That um, it's kind of like popcorn kernels. That like the shell on the outside. So inside is the food for the seed to grow more wheat, while the outside is a protective coating. Protect coating is fiber, which helps with our gut and uh, digestive system. So it uh, it's very healthy. It has a lot of nutrients in it, like minerals and stuff like that. So whenever we make regular, whenever you make white flour, you remove the bran. So it's just the soft, like popcorn in center, and all the starches. <laughs> almost got cookie dough, guys. And the last step, they add chocolate chips. Um, they add eight ounces. My bag is 10. I don't want two ounces sitting around, so I'm going to throw the whole thing in. I also got these. They are allergen free chocolate chip cookies, and I got these for Zach. Uh, so anytime that I send cookies all the way to Momo, uh, I use these chocolate chips to make sure that she doesn't, you know, die. I don't know if Momo's in the stream yet, but I love you, Momo. I'm going to tell her about it. Because she just woke up by the longo. Oh, Maze in the playful mood. She grabbed a tiger. Eh. And here we go. Happy biscuit dough. It looks so good. Yeah, right? It looks just like a cookie dough. Not too much different. It smells like coffee, though. It's got intense coffee flavor. I'm going to probably have to transfer this into another bowl because I need to scoop it and let it chill for an hour because they uh, they like their cookies to be chilled. You can bake them right now. There's nothing stopping you. Um, but by chilling them, we delay their spread. So we get less thin cookies and we get more dense cookies. So they're a little bit more chewy. Milk wants to lick the mixer. I do, too. Uh, I should probably keep this as my mixing, my sifting bowl, so let me get a different bowl. The recipe says to transfer this, so scoop them and then refrigerate them. One, I don't have space for a sheet pan in my fridge. Like, that's a lot of space to take up. And also, uh, I don't want to. So I'm going to transfer it to a bowl, refrigerate in the bowl, and I'm going to put my fast cookie dough while we wait. <laughs> Welcome to my stream. I tell you all the rules of cooking that you can actually ignore. That's how it works, right? Yeah. Be like, these are the these are the rules they tell you. You don't need to do that. You just do this. It's really funny because there's there's a long history uh, in the culinary world and industry of like all of this tradition and stuff like that, but there's no like foundation for the actual like the reason why we do all that mm -hmm. like, why, why do i why would i do all these procedures i'm like oh it's just because we always did it. i'm like that's not good enough reason yeah we do it this way it's what we did in the olden country and it's worked ever since have we thought about adapting it yeah. no i'm like we also you know used to 
kill people with food poisoning all the time, but we stopped that. You guys hear that was Meg? a little too much death. Can you guys hear Meg at all? Uh, no. No? She's, she's currently having a fight with Taki over a tiger? Tiger? Is that Athos? Athos. So we got our beautiful cookie dough ready for the fridge. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I need to wash dishes. Batch. So it's not going to be the most interesting. But I'll go quickly. I like to typically um, clean dishes as I go, just because I hate doing it all at the end. Yeah, uh, that's usually my mentality, except for a lot of times you're like, you can't actually clean it because you have to move on to the next thing. It's very mm -hmm. interesting, like, in the pastry world, you don't do your dishes until you have a time that you can do them, um, because you want to get everything in on your timetables. So whenever yeah. I was going through pastry school, we would get all of our stuff ready, we'd get them in the oven, and then you would go over to the dish pit and do your dishes, because things were in the oven. Like, oh, I got yeah. where I'm not doing anything but waiting, so let me do my dishes. So we would like accumulate dishes on our station, but in nice neat like uh, piles. And then I moved to culinary school because I switched programs. I went from uh, baking pastry to culinary, so I get my nutrition degree. And uh, I started doing that. My chef yelled at me, he's like, keep recruiting the station. Burr, burr, burr. I'm like, what? What am I doing wrong? And it turns out because culinary, they would just dump their dishes in the sink and someone else would do them. And I was baffled. We actually even had a class where someone would literally come in and pay their tuition to do dishes all day for a day of class. Um, let's see. Crimson missed why it went in the fridge specifically. Uh, uh, so that chills the butter. And the butter being cold uh, slows down the spreading process. And because it doesn't spread so thin, it doesn't get so crisp, so they're chewier cookies. And then Felix asked, do you normally leave the butter out for like an hour? It's about an hour for uh, softening. Room temp. Room temp. I usually use unsalted butter so I can control my salt, but if you get salted butter, you just don't use the salt that's in the recipe. Otherwise, it'll be too salty. Now we have a nice clean bowl. Okay. Shortbreads. This one's a fun one. So, full disclosure, this is a modified recipe from King Arthur. Again, love you guys, King Arthur. Uh, this episode is not sponsored by King Arthur, but damn, I wish it was. Um, they have a really great shortbread recipe uh, that it has no egg in it. It's just butter, confectioner sugar, flour and a little bit of moisture if you need it like water i'm gonna do and you can look at the recipe on twitter um i'm gonna replace some of the sugar with beet sugar because that's traditional um and i'm also going to use a little bit of wheat flour again because the hearty upland wheat um, i'm going to use coffee grounds to flavor it with so i'm not even going to make coffee or anything with them. I'm going to just put raw coffee grounds so there'll be a nice crunch in the shortbread, but also it's not too chunky to break up the shortbread texture. The shortbreads are known for having this buttery flakiness to them. And so by putting big chunks in them, I'm gonna ruin the flakiness. Um, so it's coarse ground espresso beans. And then uh, if I need water, I'm gonna use coffee. And I have some cold brew in the fridge for that. Uh, Crimson wants to know, is there an average wait time in the fridge, or how do you know when it's good to take it out? About an hour. Um, and honestly, you can bake it at any time. 
Um, but normally recipes, when they call for chilling in the fridge, it's an hour. I've seen some crazy cookie recipes where they do a 24 hour refrigeration because it allows time for the cookies to melt. I haven't tested it. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, the flavor is so developed, but I don't know what process is happening in the fridge to warrant that statement. If anybody knows, Mrs. Phantom might know, um, let me know in the comments below. Okay, so coffee shortbread. So this is the creaming method again. So we're gonna be adding basically everything to the bowl and just creaming it. Um, there's a lot of different baking mixing methods. The creaming method is the easiest where you take fat and a dry uh, ingredients and mix them up until they're creamed. So I need confectioner sugar. Everything? Yes. What's the tiny bag again? This is coffee grounds. Oh. That's cute. Yeah, I, got, I actually got them ground because I didn't want to risk them not being the right size. Let me see if I can show. Oh. Yeah. So they smell fantastic. Ooh. Love me good coffee. Um, you mean this wasn't going to be the stream where you just ground up coffee grinds on your own in like a mortar and pestle? <laughs> I could. I got a coffee grinder. Ooh. I have everything. In fact, if you ask Taki, I might have too much stuff. We were having trouble finding places for things. Taki's like, are you sure we need this like one specific kitchen item that we've never used but may use in the future? You, you know what that is a valid statement because I wanted to keep this out and let me tell you how often I've actually used it since we moved in. Zero times. Zero. It's really cool. It's an EC, so it injects uh, different uh, air into the canister so you can either carbonate stuff or you can mm. use nitrogen to make whipped cream. So you can make basically your own whipped cream in this. It's really cool. I just haven't had any. Oh. I had an excuse to use it. Yeah. I want to make carbonated grapes again. They were delicious. Carbonated grapes? Yeah. So they like pop what? into your mouth. So you eat the grape and then it's just a fizzy grape. I feel like that would fuck with me. It would and it's delicious. I highly recommend. It's 10 out of 10. Um, Kirby says one of these days Taki's going to hide it and you won't even notice. Also, Crimson wants to know nitrogen and whipped cream? Question mark. Yeah, so um, whenever you're making whipped cream, you are incorporating air into it. Um, so this thing pressurizes, takes pressurized air and puts it in here, but you can't use any old air because CO2 is too light. It'll just escape the cream. Um, so you want to use a heavier gas like nitrogen. So um, I, I think it's actually like nitrous. It's not exactly like liquid nitrogen or something like that. Um, but it's a heavier gas than the CO2. So it actually stays mixed in with the cream in order to make the whipped cream. That's how they do whippets. Don't do whippets at home. It's illegal. But that's how they do whippets. The more you know. The more you know. And knowing it's half the battle. Okay. Um, cool. I'm going to go ahead and cream my flour, my sugars. With my butter. <laughs> Cooking oh. is chemistry, Crimson. We're ignoring that. Definitely didn't see confectioner sugar fly everywhere. Not at all. So that's why you have the white jacket, because you can't see the sugar. I almost wore a black one, and I was like, what is this? This is bad. Going vroom. Um, I'm going to go a little bit longer with this one because it is shortbread. The more air I incorporate, the more tender the baked good is because those, those little air pockets will expand in the heat and make the flakiness. So if I incorporate more air, I got a flakier cookie. So I'm going to whip this until it's almost like white. 
which is insane because, you know, butter is yellow. Mm -hmm. Butter yellow? You heard it here. Oh, I didn't notice. Is it like the bowl, the attached to the mixer? Like it's not on the bottom of the mixer? What? Like, mine is just not floating. Mine is not floating. Is oh what yeah, trying to say. that's the bottom. Yeah, the, that's the artisan. Um, you see how basically pale it is? Like right against my jacket, you can see it's almost the same color. That's the consistency we're looking for. It has it's a lot of air yellow. pockets. It's still kind of what? Still kind of yellow. Yeah, it's never going to get full, like, pale. Well, it might with a lot of whipping, but I don't want to make them that tender because they'll just, like, go <laughs> when you eat them, and I don't want that. And no, I will not repeat that sound effect. <laughs> Damn. I know. How sad. How rude. Sayings mean to us. Um, two tablespoons of coffee ground might actually be too much. We'll see. I don't know. I've never made this recipe before. A lot of times people, they already tested their recipes whenever they do this. I'm not. We don't test things in this kitchen. That's, we're the science department. We do things yeah. on the fly. Yeah, we're, you're welcome to my testing kitchen. We're testing it right now on stream. What better place to do it than with me? Um, and then I'm going to add a little bit of vanilla because vanilla is delicious. Um, so you do have, like all apologies if I butcher this, uh, milk CR asking how's my old coddle, ah, fucking hell, college buddy doing? I'm doing great. Welcome to the chat. Yeah, I uh, advertise on uh, Facebook and I have a lot of people from college that were like, oh, we're going to watch. Um, I'm kind of excited to see them. It's good to see you guys do it. Uh, as you can see here, I'm winging it just like I did in all my classes. So That's the way to go. Listen, I graduated. So there's that. Hey, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter how you graduated. You graduated. I actually did really good. Like, I think I graduated summa cum laude. Oh. Well, you're doing great things. <laughs> I'm a smart cookie, even though I act like a idiot himbo sometimes. Uh, so I added those, and now it's just flour. You don't even add egg to this one. You just add the flour straight to it. Um, so a one and three fourths cup of flour. I am going to sip this one because uh, it is a shortbread. It can be a little bit finicky, and I'm worried about dispersion. So. One and three fourths, I said, right? Okay. Yeah. I know, I know. I'm not doing by weight. That's my last version. Volume is very finicky and not accurate. I'm a disgrace to the science community. I get it, I get it. And then a fourth of a cup of whole wheat. Uh, there is no leavener in sh these shortbreads. Oh, the music stops. When did that happen? Oh, Mrs. Well, Phantom. Oh, was it about talking? What? Why, why were you nearly offended, Mrs. Phantom? And yes. I think ta Go ahead. I was saying, I think it was because Taki crouched past the camera. I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah. Saying, uh, Crimson was like, did Taki just crouch by the camera? Yeah, she's been doing that. She finally got oh. caught. Volumetric measurements. Oh, yeah. I know. I Listen, I would love to use my scale all the time, but I know it's not accessible for everyone, so I want to at least have one of my versions be cups. 
Uh, my next one is all volume. I'll be pulling out my scale. Where is it? Right here is the scale. Is it? In here. Did Taki can... hide the scale? No, Taki did not hide the scale. There's there was a metal piece on top of the scale. Taki's never seen her. We get along very well. Oh. <laughs> There's no conflict here. The most conflict that me and Taki have is whether or not who, who's going to be the most considerate of someone that day. I have to pulse this and it may still get in my face. It's okay, Nye. We know how he is. We know he'd sell you out in a heartbeat. Crumble, crumble. Oh, this might not need any... Oh, yep, nope, it doesn't need it. Nice. Uh, if I needed it, if it was crumbly and it wasn't coming together, I would add moisture up to a certain point. I do not need it. It seems that my butter had enough moisture in it or I overdid the vanilla, one of those two. Uh, so it's coming together very nicely. I will only need to uh, shape this and then roll it out later. Now for a very scientific process. Oh, Mo. Mama, welcome to the chat. She says your kitchen is so big. It is. This is like the biggest kitchen I've had in my life, besides probably my parents. Uh, and my, my parents is weird because it's big, but it's like long. So it doesn't have as much space as this sometimes. I'm very happy. Me and Taki really lucked out. This may have been one of the selling points, the reason why I was able to move so far away. Yeah. Because I wanted See, like, the kitchen. One of my things that's like I would want in a apartment or a house is just a bigger kitchen. Like I could care less about lots of stuff. Just a big kitchen. It was affordable, and Taki's like, are you sure you want to be driving 30 minutes to work? I was like, it means that I can afford a giant kitchen, yes. Like, hands down. No, mm -hmm. no hesitation with that question. Oh, oh I almost scooped this dough without showing you guys. This is a shortbread. Ooh, it's very flat looking. But that could be the mixer. So it's got a little speckle of all of the coffee bits in there. Oh. And so I'll refrigerate this one, uh, not so much for the spreading, but so that I can actually roll it out thin and then cut out shapes. Because if I didn't refrigerate it, there would be no way I could actually roll this. Oh man, we got an Alexander needs to run down. Is, is it really that old? <coughs> mayday, mayday, mayday. We need to wipe up something because May might get it. Oh, okay. She's alert. Or May. I'm allergic oh. to all the things. She can't have chicken. Like, poor girl. That's depressing. Right? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm dropping cookie dough all over the place. What's wrong? She can't have chicken. She can't have uh, a lot of different proteins. She has to have like a salmon, special salmon food, right? Yeah, um, hydrolyzed protein. Hydrolyzed protein. We gotta sit here, Ty. I just talking quietly. Never <laughs> Now, is the plastic wrap better? Th Does it matter what you use? I like to use plastic wrap because it comes out of it really easily and doesn't stick too badly. Mm -hmm. um, I find if you like put it in a plastic bag, you might have problems. Um, if you put it in a bowl, you want to get it as close to a flat state as it is, so that way when you're rolling it out, you don't have to push so hard. 
Mm -hmm. The closest it is to the actual state that you want to be in, the less work you have to do on the go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotta do more dishes. And then we get to my version of Cognizance. I don't even know what time it is. Hold on, it's only been an hour. Hold on. What's your favorite thing about cooking, Sam? What's my favorite thing about cooking? Yeah. Um, I want to say something like inspirational, like the science of it, or um, like how therapeutic it is, and like Zen. But honestly, my favorite part. Oh gosh, actually, you know what? I am going to be getting sentimental. Um, I'm going to stop doing it. My favorite part of cooking is that feeling that you get whenever someone tries your food and you can see how much joy it brings them. Like, yes. just seeing someone enjoy eating makes me so happy. Like, nothing is better than, like, someone that's been miserable, never enjoys food and everything else like that, and just seeing them just smile because it tastes good. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it'll change someone's day. I have a friend, Hannah, who comes over and anytime I make, um, I call it my fastball special, it's brown butter, sage, goat, cheese, pasta with sausage. She literally will just sit there and just make like squeals of joy and happiness because it's so good. And it just, it makes my heart melt. So. It's cute. Yeah. That's my favorite part of cooking. I feel that though. It's like, do you like it? Do you like it? Does it bring you joy? Mm -hmm. At least the way it brings you joy. I don't even want like someone to say, "Oh my gosh, the best thing I've ever tasted," or anything else like that. I just like I don't need the compliment. I just need to know that it made you, someone happy. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. That's why I love sending cookies to you guys. Yeah. Uh, Momo says you need to feed her. Please feed her. She doesn't eat. Yeah. <laughs> Am I good, Mom? Every time you say I'm eating a bagel for dinner, I'm like, uh. <laughs> Thing's gonna drive or fly out there. Personally, make you dinner. <laughs> I mean, if I had the money, I would do that a lot more often for friends. Kentucky was living in Kentucky. All I wanted to do was fly up to see her, and I was just like, I can't do it. Now I get to make dinner for her every week. We have chicken parmesan. This week I think we have taco. We haven't done. Oh, we need the groceries. I'll talk to her about that later. Oh, we have Shadowbringers. Next, next uh, stream is smoked chicken, because everyone wants chicken now. Chicken. Uh, Nini also wants yet. to know what's the most surprising thing you've ever made or eaten. Most surprising thing I've ever made or eaten. Ooh. You know, uh, last night I went to the chef's table, um, and it was absolutely incredible. Um, it's basically a seven course meal where the chef just makes food and spoils you. And the thing that really surprised me is they had a crudo, um, which was like raw uh, fish and everything, which was delicious, the fish and everything else like that. But there was one element of the plate that just threw me for a loop and it was the smoked watermelon cubes. Cause you what? eat it, it tastes like watermelon and then it's like a tree hits you in the face and it was so stupid good. And it was like smoked watermelon, really. That, that's the thing that's gonna make me just like go, oh my gosh, I want more of this. It was incredible. I love it so that's, much. That's wild. Right? Would you like some smoked watermelon? What? 
What? No, just like going back to smoke watermelon. Yeah, yeah, it's insane. Like they, uh, I think they did a cold smoke on it. So it doesn't eat the watermelon at all because it was a cold watermelon. And it was like little tiny cubes along with pickled watermelon rind. It was so good. Um, I am now going to start the uh, amped up version of the coffee biscuit. The original recipe that they have in the cookbook, it's great. It's very accessible. The other one I just made, the shortbread, that one's probably more traditional and classic to like knowing the history of Norderons and the Calusia area for the ingredients and everything else like that. This one is more reflective of what it would be like to be a level 74, I think it is, culinarian, making coffee biscuits. Because like a chocolate chip cookie is a plain, regular Toll House chocolate chip cookie. That's a level one recipe. Let's make a level 76. So uh, I'm going to brown some butter. Is this the one where you get to use all the fancy volumetric measurements that make Mrs. Phantom a nigh happy? Yes, yes it is. I'm going to have to weigh everything. It also has double sugar. And double sugar milk, there you go. This is my favorite tool in the kitchen, a bench scraper. I use it as a knife, I use it for cleaning off counters. I use it for everything. I want one of those. I don't have one. Oh, they're so nice. I got this one. I don't know if they still sell them at Sir Top, but it was like five bucks. And it's just a sheet of metal and it works fantastic. Compared to like all the ones that have like fancy grips and stuff. I'm like, I don't need that, I need this. You're making <laughs> Momo want to go to Target. Don't go to Target. You'll buy drapes when you don't need drapes. <laughs> buy drapes? Have you not seen that, that, that comic? Like, yes, I need curtains. Okay. Home is over. I'm a little bit closer. So what makes these cookies special is I'm going to do some extra work that, like, is above and beyond what you need to do for a cookie because I'm extra. Um, and so I'm going to take half of my butter and brown it. Butter is a combination of fat, milk solids, which is like the sugars, lactose, and stuff like that, and some proteins. Because you take the cream of the milk, the fattiest part of the milk, and you basically uh, work it so much that the proteins curl and like squeeze out everything, and all that's left behind is the fat. And so that fat is your butter. And butter, while everyone's like, oh, that's pure fat, it has trapped in it. It's actually an emulsion of fat and liquid. So there's a little bit of water in there. There's a little bit of those milk solids and everything else like that. So what I'm doing is I'm melting the butter, cooking off that excess water, and then allowing the sugars to brown. And the browning process, welcome to full science, let's say. Um, the browning process is called mailing browning, where sugars and proteins break down in the presence of one another, and it creates a variety of flavors. Um, that's what makes a lot of your savory umami browning kind of things to get the nice sear on meat and stuff like that that's similar flavor so we're going to make basically a very nutty savory kind of tasting butter that'll pair very well with the high sugar of the cookie dough and then my secret weapon is going to be chocolate covered coffee beans instead of just plain coffee in the dough so every bite will have a little bit of chocolatey crunch to it Ooh. so Oh, hey, this is Shira Ghani. Guys, we're at the SC house. Yay. Oh, this see, I'm... Yes. I should be the Shira Ghani making pots. I would have laughed to find out if you guys were all in Kino's house oh. watching my stream. Oh, we should be. That would have been funny. The only downside Actually, of browning butter is you're playing a game of chicken. And the butter is always going to win. So basically, you want to get as dark as possible before it starts to blacken. <laughs> They're talking about pots in the chat. But my. I'm crafting in Ilmeg. 
You're crafting an El Mag now? Yeah. Oh, hey, Hayes is in the chat. Welcome, Hayes. I think followers I have. I mean, I thought our viewers. It should be right underneath the chat. 17? 17? Yeah. Guys, you're gonna make me cry. This, this is the highest gear count I've ever had in my life. Hi! Uh, Phantom wants to know how high is the heat for browning? Uh, I like to do medium high, uh, but whenever it starts getting sputtery like this, I'll turn it down. It depends on how angry my butter wants to get at me. Um, your butter that has more water content, so your more store brand butters, uh, they're going to pop and sizzle a lot more, so you might want to do a little bit lower heat. Fairy gold usually behaves for me because fairy gold has a very low water content and high fat. Um, that's why it tastes so good. And I'm going to try to show you guys as best as possible what browning looks like for the butter, but it may be hard. Oh, wait, I have an idea. I have a plastic cleaner. I mean, glass cleaner. Uh, those of you that got the first round of cookies I made, you guys had a variation of this where I did brown butter cookies. When are we getting the coffee biscuits? Uh, coffee biscuits are probably going to happen. Uh, I'll probably start taking orders next week because I have a wedding, of course, this week. Uh, so I'm going to be a little bit busy. I won't have time to fulfill orders. Um, and I, of course, I'm going to have to sadly charge for shipping because it pays for it. Let me make sure I don't drop this. I mean, that's what the FC chests were, right? <laughs> <laughs> If only the FC chest could pay for my real life shipping. <laughs> Can I transfer this to real money? Can we do reverse RMT? Yeah, I don't really want to like buy gill. Like I can make plenty of that. Can you just give me money for the gill I made? <laughs> the reverse gotcha game. Look at that. That's brown butter. It is very brown. Right? See? Uh, against the chef coat and everything. Basically, all the sugars and proteins and whatnot have met, gone through malleable browning, and so they get this color on them. Uh, now, we want this to chill a little bit, so I'm going to try to add it near the end of my creamy process. Otherwise, I'm going to have very loose cookies, uh, and I want to kind of still have a little bit of air in there. Uh, I am not going to drink it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll taste it. It's very nutty. Delicious. Do I have tasting spoons? I do. Needs salt. Otherwise, it's good. It tastes like butterscotch, but without the sugar. Oh. Because that's basically what butterscotch is. It's butter that has gone through a browning process and presents the sugars over the stove. The more you know. Okay, now we gotta measure things. Please, Mrs. Stanton. And myself, actually. Sorry, Nai. So her name is Nai saying it's a program. I'm so used to it. Oh, Nai wants inside. I'll be right back. Good night, you made me. She came over here. You guys should probably see her. Hey, man. Come here. Come here. Saying, Come here. Momo's cat, Moxie, is watching you cook intently, and she's never seen him so focused on anything that's not mice. Oh, wow. Does that mean I'm praying? Or does that mean that I'm interesting? <laughs> Both? He's attacking a treat now. Oh, uh, well, then I'm going to need to get a treat if I'm going to try to get her over here. Let me finish measuring my beet sugar. So this one also uses beet sugar because, well, that's what they use in the game, so. I'm going to be honest. If you can't get beet sugar, 
This isn't like, ooh, Storbo's fine, kind of Ina Garden moment, but it kind of is, uh, because regular sugar should be high. Oh, the base right here, come on, let's see. So we can't have an authentic Final Fantasy fourteen online experience if we don't yeah. use beet sugar. No, you're not supposed to be lifting things, Taki. You went through surgery. Hey. You come over here. Hey. May. Hey. May. Come here, baby. Oh, Look milks by herself at Kino's house. Look at her. There she goes. Okay, she's gone. There's a little May sighting. I need to wash my hands. Come in, milk. Oh, hey! My friend, uh, Katie is in the chat too. How about? Um, measures. Uh, brochure. You know, it's Yeah, it's the Kugane music. Momo posted a picture in Discord of her cat. Oh, I gotta look at it. I'm gonna start creaming my butter and sugar. Oh, come on. Oh, I gotta this dough is gonna look a little bit different than the first one because remember, we have double the sugar that we had before because this is more traditional to American style recipes. So I'm gonna stream in the brown butter in the hopes that the cold bowl and the cold butter and not adding it all at once keeps them all from melting super quickly and allows me to still have a very soft dough. It seems like it's behaving pretty well. Yeah, you get all that good browning. This. Ideally, I probably should like have ground the butter before the stream so it was super cool before I cooked it and everything else like that. But one, I want to show you guys what browning butter was. And two, um, I didn't want it, so here we go. too brown, you want to, uh, not brown, too warm. You want to feel the bowl, if the bowl feels warm, that might be something that makes it longer to get rid of the heat. Oysters. Egg on the loose. Uh, so I'm going to add Twix. Again, I'm cracking and putting it in and then turning on my mixer because my mixer makes loud strange noises and screams. Oh. I mean, that's a mood, though. It works fine. Uh, Phantom is asking, when recipes ask for eggs, what size do they usually mean? 
Large. Large. Yeah. Uh, most American and least recipes are designed for large. Fun fact, a lot of European recipes actually denote the size of egg, or even the weight of the egg, um, which is a lot more helpful than American style. Uh, also, more fun facts, uh, box mixes, um, like for brownie mix and whatnot, uh, people will be like, well, I use large eggs and they work fine. I use small eggs and they work fine. That's because the people that developed those box mixes did a stress test. And uh, it's what uh, some of us in the industry refer to the uh, as the uh, dummy test, where you literally try to make the box mix thing in the most terrible bad way possible as someone that doesn't read instructions properly and see if it still works. So that like you put like a stress test on it to make sure that it's idiot free. More fun facts. And then uh, I need a vanilla. Two tablespoons. Good enough. Again, like your ancestors told you. Yeah. I'm measuring everything by weight except for vanilla. <laughs> I need to sift my flour and measure it. Zero. Ten ounces of all purpose flour. That's a whole mood. No. Hungry Wolf Kitchen said vanilla like garlic should be used without particular restraint or concern. Yes. The only thing that you do not want to do is use so much vanilla that it tastes like a sweat, like, you know, medicinal. Um, at work, my uh, old purchaser likes to tell a story about how someone, like, uh, uh, requisitioned, I think, a quart of vanilla for their rec, for like their menu or something like that, because they did the conversions wrong or something like that. And he was like, are you flavoring a swimming pool? Don't really need a quart of vanilla for anything. <laughs> Why not, though? <laughs> Why not? I do what I want. Uh... My favorite thing is people that, try, that are like, oh, vanilla is alcohol, I'm gonna drink it. I'm like, whoa. Vanilla does not taste as good as it smells, I'm gonna tell you that. Much. You wanna know, you wanna know a story? One time, I was at, uh, uh, like I was in band and our section was having like a practice day at a friend's house and we we're making cookies one day cause like who actually practices, right? We yeah. just cook instead. And they, she was like, I will give you a dollar if you drink this, like, a teaspoon of vanilla or something. Ooh. The vanilla challenge is, like, the real cinnamon challenge. Yeah, it wasn't good. I didn't enjoy it. Yeah, no. Zero out of ten. Uh, and then baking soda. Uh, I don't think I talked about it with this last cookie. There is a difference between baking soda and baking powder. Baking soda is an alkali that will react with vinegars. Uh, or things that are acidic and cause a bubbling reaction, which creates gas that rises and allows for things to spread. Um, while baking powder is an alkali and a acid that will activate at high heat, which gives you rise during the baking process. So the baking soda here will allow our cookies to spread and get that nice lacy edge to them. If I wanted to make cookies that like were poofy and got like nice volume, I use baking powder. Momo said her dad and her chugged maple syrup one day because they saw it in a movie. Oh, you want to do a fun thing with maple syrup? You take some maple syrup and plug your nose 
and then take a drink of it, swish around your mouth, it's just gonna taste sweet, and then open your nose, and all of a sudden you'll be hit in the face by a maple tree. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even like joking, like it's a great way to identify what tastes are actually nose based compared to your taste buds. A lot of people just like, things taste like they taste, but you really don't realize how much a difference your nose makes to how food tastes. It's uh, something I show all my students um, in the beginning of the semester is we, we do a little tasting thing. Also salt to, you know, what the, the ancestors say. Um, the ancestors know. The ancestors know. It's oh, really Momo, can the, can the gender of the day be the ancestors know? The ancestors know. Ancestors, you're my plea. Help me to use vanilla. Uh, it's really funny saying ancestors so they, that they know because uh, growing up, uh, most of my elders and whatnot were uh, away. So all of the cooking I learned is from my mom. So by saying ancestors know, it's like my mom knows, which means that she's like in my ear telling me, no, no, that's too much salt. I don't know if she's watching. I know my dad might pop in and say hi, watch the stream. Oh, I'm adding the flour to the dough. Now we're reaching. You're adding the flour to the counter. Did it go on the counter? Well, it looked like it on my end. Oh, it did? I mean, what, what's cooking if you don't make it? I mean, that's my kitchen all the time, so. Mm -hmm. Aki and uh, uh, May are like lounging, relaxing on the couch over there, but uh, May is just like looking at me and like, what the hell are you doing? Come over here, relax. <laughs> like, I'm cooking. Yes, Momo. She said granite counter is her enemy because she can never tell what she spilled. Yes. It's beautiful, but I also do not know the clean, cleanliness state of my kitchen until I run my hand over it. And then I go, Oh, this looks so good. I just want to eat this with a spoon. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Here is the last ingredients. Oh. Pop, cover, cover, copy beans. These are great. So they're like little chocolate chips, but I don't know if you can see it. What is the thing that streamers do? There, there it is. Focus. It's not gonna focus. There's a bean in there. It's tasty. It's Bean. Bean. You go right in there. The whole bag. Whole bag. Eight ounces. Uh, Crimson would like to know if there's a difference between espresso and coffee. Yes. Um, espresso is typically. Um. Well, I'm gonna get this wrong. It's. Robusto Ar Arabica? I, don't quote me. But it's a certain kind of coffee bean that is more intense and it's roasted to a darker color than other coffee beans are. So it has more caffeine to it than coffee does. Um, and like the preparation differs too. So most of the time whenever you're using espresso, you grind it very, very finely and then it's um, uh, pressurized, so it's pressurized hot water is pushed through the compact fine espresso to get like this very concentrated frothy um, uh, drink. Uh, espresso actually has more fat in it than coffee does <laughs> because coffee beans naturally have fat in it but just not as much and you don't extract as much through certain kinds of brewing processes but the, co uh, the espresso bean method gets you a lot of fat. That's why you have that froth on the top of it. It's more robusto. Okay, yeah. 
Um, and, and it's the more, it's the stronger coffee beans overall that are used for espresso. It's delicious. I, I'm a big fan of espresso drinks. Um, the only thing I don't like is Americanos because if I'm going to drink Americano, I'm going to just drink a coffee. Um, I'm not going to do a shot of espresso and then add hot water to it. Like, come on, let's be real. Okay. Are you ready for this? Yes. Oh, come on. Stay on the paddle. Stay. Yeah, I'm going to make it special. <laughs> I tried. We saw it for a glimpse. Look at that. Oh, there we go. Isn't that awesome? It so, looks good. Give me thing. Doesn't that, you can see how it is a little bit of a darker color than the other dough does. And it still looks like a chocolate chip cookie dough because of all the speckling's of all the different coffee beans in there. It smells mm -hmm. nutty and caramelly and ooh. ooh. Uh, so this is more appropriate for a level 75 favorite. Just saying. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start preheating the ovens. I'm going to go ahead and scoop the original coffee biscuits and bake off probably two sheet pans of those. And then after that, I'm going to start rolling out the shortbreads and then bake off those, and then I'll do these last, so this gets enough time in the refrigerator. Before I put them away. Look at that. The differences in the colors of those. This is the base one. That's that one. You can see the difference in the color, even despite the fact that this one's in a white bowl and this one's in a metal one. You can see that there's distinct differences in the color. Also, because I'm in scooping stage, I'm going to do a little bit of condensing and clean up. Please ignore my dirty refrigerator. Same. Same nigh. We just want to eat the cookie dough. We could. Um, the only downside is that technically there are packages on the flour that have not been killed yet, so there is a chance of food more than this. That's the risk we take. Also, Baby Phantom is awake and is enjoying the stream. Hi, Baby Phantom! One day this will be you cooking in a kitchen. Please fit, please fit, please fit, please fit, yay. I would wipe down my stand mixer and clean it up and everything else like that, and I want to get moving on to the scooping. So that will happen. Hopefully, after the stream is over, we'll 
have to do it in the needle for like three weeks. I love this stuff. You can buy this online. I'm also running out of need to get more. Pre-cut sheets of parchment paper. Free cut sheets of parchment paper? Yep, see? I'm ones... jealous, because cutting parchment paper is a pain in the ass. And this one's even non-stick, so it's already coated with a thin layer of, like, silicon. What the... Mm. You can just get it on Amazon. Stupid cool All stuff. Right. You can also get it from, like, restaurant supply stores and stuff, but I don't have, like, a membership to this, so... Mm-hmm. Other good tool, scoop. Watch this. Cookie. Already right, done. Perfectly scooped. Magic. But then you don't get the fun of rolling it in your hands. I can still do that, but I get uh, even portions. You don't need even portions. Let me tell you, once you scoop once, you'll never not scoop again. Well, it's, pro it's probably like a million times faster as well, so you're not wrong. Yeah. I have two different sizes of these two. I got one for the mini cookies I said that one time, and then these are for the potato chip cookies. I did this mm. size. So after I do my little scoop right there, is make sure that they're nicely spaced apart so they don't run into each other. So, oh gosh, some of these are not perfectly aligned. Very, very, very visible on the camera. Uh, normally I want to have a minimum two fingers distance, if not three. Sometimes they can fit three. I got bigger fingers than other people. But you want to have space between them because they're going to spread. Um, some places like to squish them down. I don't think that's so much necessary, especially for these. The rest we call for it. So I'm probably going to do at least that. I don't think cookies need help spreading. They're very good on their own. They know what they're about. Yeah. And I don't need super lacy edges. I kind of want. A little bit of chew. I hate, I like, a good crispy cookie is great and all, but I prefer there to be a little more substance. Mm. Crispy lacy cookies are good for dunking and also ice cream sandwiches. Mm. This recipe that they have from Final Fantasy is looking like it's probably make three dozen. That's many cookies. Yep. You can always half it. I might be a little bit shy of three dozen, but I'm going to get minimum two dozen for change. As you can see, I have about that much left. What are you going to do with all these cookies when you're done? We have friends coming over at four. Oh, that's right, that's right. So I'm going to pawn them all off to them. So for two of them, can't have chocolate, so they're only going to be able to eat the shortbreads. But, and I also have uh, a friend in town, and I'm pretty sure I made all these peanut free, so he'll be able to try them um, and the wedding and everything else like that. So I have ways of getting rid of them. Rocky can take them to work. That's also true. Er, uh, co-workers have been asking for me to make more and more baked goods for a long time. Oh, are these the same co-workers who are upset that you're gay? Because <laughs> they like your food? Yes. Yes. That's it. They're upset. They're like, is he single? It's like, yes. But he's gay. No, I don't know. Like, damn it. It's just the audacity to think that Taki is living with 
a guy who is single that can cook and that they like if he was straight that she wouldn't have like snapped that up either like they're like i'm gonna snatch your roommate away from you Why? Like, like, like you the... <laughs> she's like don't you take away my chicken parmesan dinners excuse me these are mine <laughs> Uh, you could bake both cookies at the same time. May require rotation and ovens and everything else like that. I need to kill time by requiring two pans to go through so I have time to roll out my shortbreads. So I'm going to do one at a time to ensure a nice even cooking. I start at 10 minutes and then I check them and then I give them anywhere between two to three more minutes depending on how the color is going. Always check before they're done because you never know how things work and you don't want to catch things as they're burning. I burned the cookies before. Thought you'll never let me forget. The shame. Toga Toga of the Great Toga Clan. Oh my gosh. Are you really? Hockey. You guys Sorry, the Great Riki Clan. He's stealth to get the, uh, the Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Tacky! Flower. Oh, I put on my flower. Dummy. Did not know that that's how this works. <laughs> Yeah, I never realized I always put it over it because the paper towel thing is. So I went to go like that and pulled off the top. Oh gosh! Oh my goodness! Wait, are you supposed to pull the top off? Well, yes, but paper towel rolls aren't that tight, so. Hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna start this. Oh, I'm going to need it for this. I'm going to need it eventually. How's everyone doing in the chat? Having a good day? Having a great day. Hungry. That's a moment. Amen. The hungers. We may or may not have forgotten to figure out our lunch before we did this. Oh. You ordered food? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, that's fine. You're fine. Probably order food for uh, new company. Uh, Stop by at 6 p.m. Whatever the saying time zone is for a cup. You remember where I put my rolling pin? Is it in here? Is it in this one? Guys, do you have trouble? I don't know where my rolling pin is. Here. Just make a rolling pin on the fly. I did that yeah, once. Like, it's in the, it's in the chopsticks, actually. It wouldn't really work for this situation. Is it one of these? Yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> We're good. Yeah. Oka says just use the paper towel roll or the wine bottle or. Well, Hungry Wolf said the white bottle. I don't know why. I know I have one. I just. Hide and seek with Sang. Something we would have put away, like, in a weird place.
Maybe pushing this one too fast. Might need more time. Speed. I'm misbehaving too badly though. Just feel soft. You guys see a split? Yeah. Okay, we can push it back together. It's just happy little accents, always. <laughs> this one is definitely the experimental batch. I know the other two are going to work really well. Hungry Wolf Kitchen is asking if your shortbread was one, two, three. Uh, it might have been. It's the one from King Arthur. So oh, hold look. on, abort the cupcakes. I want this story. <gasps> abort the cupcakes. Yeah. Hello. Um. We were, oh gosh, this was so long ago. That was during my um, internship where uh, one of my friends was having trouble scooping cake batter into a cupcake liner. And uh, it was going really bad. I was like, abort the cupcakes, abort the cupcakes. And we were dying of laughing. It was good, good <laughs> times. This is my first stream ever. I've, ne this, I've never done a cooking stream before. Welcome to my first cooking stream. Um, it is not a one, two, three. It's uh, one sugar to one fat to two flour. So it's a one, one, two. Okay, so it's very soft. Let's see how well it comes out. I'm scared to flip it. In fact, when you cut it, and then flip it in your hands. Okay. Okay. Oh no. Oh no. Just squish it back together. It's fine. I'm contemplating if I should bother continue trying to do cutouts with it. It's not going to behave. Or if I just go to the way it's supposed to be made, where they put it in a pan and they cut it afterwards. Might not be the mm -hmm. ideal shape I'm going for, but at least I know that it works. I think that's probably the best course of action. Hey, that's what you do in a cooking. You can try out new things. It may not work out the way you want it to, and you just adapt. Just let the ancestors guide you, say. Yeah. Uh, like, everyone, like, wants to fall apart whenever something doesn't go exactly right. But the difference between a good baker and a great baker is your ability to adapt to the obstacles that come your way. Your cake falls and doesn't look pretty or anything else like that. Make it into a trifle. Make cake falls. There's a lot of different ways that you can utilize stuff. Nothing is, nothing besides burnt is an absolute abject failure. There's always things that you can do to help save it. Mm. So for this one, we're going to make it in a pan. 
saying you should do like an adaptive cooking stream where you things are just done in a way that they're intended to break apart or something and you adapt a recipe to it i mean that's basically that's basically what i do for my uh classes i teach i, I purposely give my students stuff i know is going to fail so that we can talk about it um phantom wants to know how you recover from a collapsed flan um a collapsed flan would be like a um uh, well Flan collapsing? Do you mean a souffle? Mm -hmm. oh, I don't think I've ever heard of a flan collapsing. Wait, you think we're just said yes. Uh, collapsed souffle is a little bit of a harder one, but uh, the easiest solution is put a scoop of ice cream and no one will notice a collapse. By the way, what I'm doing is, because this needs to cook in a pan, I need to make sure that it doesn't stick. So what I'm doing is I'm rubbing a pan with coconut oil and coating it so that it's nice and shiny and uh, greasy. And then you double to make sure it doesn't stick. Put the flour in there, kind of shake it around. And that's going to give me a nice flour coating on the bottom of the pan, like so. See how it's just falling apart? I would have been trying to make sure that it doesn't uh, <laughs> separate. Other than squished, is there an ideal form you want to make? Uh, the recipe originally called for circular, but I'm also, I might check my own plate on something. I'm worried I'm remembering the recipe wrong. I think I'm supposed to split between two pans. This might be too thick of a shortbread. But I'll check. Let me check on my cookies first. Oh, yeah, there we go. These are the ones from the cookbook. Ooh. Gib. They, sell, they smell pretty good. The coffee smell is not as strong as I was expecting. Okay, I'm going to set a timer for those. And I'm going to look up the recipe, the recipe real quick. Momo, male saying a like a sticker of his catboy head to put as a name tag. Oh, the follow. Hello, follow. Oh, two follows. Oh, there's no notification on the thing. That's okay. I uh, wonder why. Oh, I think I know why the alerts aren't showing up. Ha 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 ha. I need to move my video capture device down below their alert box. Here we go. I can replay these. There it is. Look at those little ear wiggles. Mmm. And then thank you for the follow. 
enemy and Milo the weird. Let me repeat this so you get seen. And thank you for the fall, Hungry Wolf Kitchen. Let me split this dough in half. Spread it nice and thin over the bottom of the pan. And you gotta love having more music. Mm. Hockey's favorite expansion. First, so you're going to uh, you're going to make me cry in a long time. Those of you that are here just for me cooking, uh, I, I'm cooking from the Final Fantasy XIV cookbook. So these are recipes that are based off of recipes that are actually in the video game that I played with my friends. Uh, that's where Mira's from. Mira, I met playing Final oh. Fantasy XIV. Uh, and we became very quick friends because we were both uh, nerds, so. Yeah. So I'm docking the dough. Uh, docking is a process that basically prevents uh, the dough from rising too much. And this will help ensure that I don't have too poofy of a shortbread so it stays nice and dense. Um, mm. Easiest way to do this is with a fork. You basically just stab it a bunch of times. It's like a uh, nail and you carry. You just, you know, do your Bahamut claws. Just be like, stab, 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 stab. <laughs> Except for the short print that doesn't die. You carry bull <laughs> You're giving yeah. Yukari like war flashbacks. She was the one that was in Ukab last night. She has no. Uh, <laughs> that's fair. She subjects herself to this. Okay. So those doughs are ready to pop in the oven whenever we are ready for them. Like almond milk or goat milk or anything like that? Uh, I prefer milk, uh, cow's milk. Mm. Uh, that's just what I grew up on. So we have our coffee mm. biscuit here. Mm -hmm. It's actually pretty textbook. Can I get it to focus, please? Nope. Hello. Hello. Nope. It does not want to focus. Well, now we'll get a better camera in the future. But you can see it's pretty textbook, um, pretty uniform across the board. I think the mini chips really help with the aesthetic of it. Um, if we open them up. They, these have cooled off enough. We can look at the cross section. You can see it's a very tight crumb. It's nice and soft on the inside. If we uh, flatten out a little bit more, we can get them crispier. If we didn't refrigerate them, they'd be even more crispy. The flavor is good. It's not as sweet as you would normally expect a cookie to be, but that's not bad. The wheat is surprisingly strong for how little is in there. Is this the one that you sifted and put the brand back in? Yeah, I did that on all of them. All of them have whole wheat. Okay. I will say the most disappointing uh, thing about these is I have all the recipe to the T. This is the base recipe. I feel like I'm too short. Um, I followed the base recipe on these. And um, I can get it. You sure? Okay. Um, and I don't know if you guys heard me bark. Uh, the coffee flavor is not pronounced. Mm. It really doesn't tastes very coffee -y. Yeah. 
It just tastes like a nice, good, chewy cookie. Less sugar. Mm -hmm. A little bit of nuttiness from the whole wheat. But it's definitely liked not coffee. It? It's not a coffee biscuit. I don't think it's a coffee biscuit. I think they need no. it. It's either I didn't use the right espresso to capitalize on it, but I don't think it's super coffee -y. Yoshi P, why? I'm trying to isolate burgers. Same phantom. Same. It's hard to tell if the bitter flavor I'm tasting at the end as a fi finishing note, like it's not super bitter, it's like a hint of bitter. Mm. It's hard to tell if it's wheat or coffee is the problem. Because sometimes um... it tastes like wheat, sometimes it tastes like coffee, and it's not... Mm. The finish definitely has a familiarity with coffee, but it doesn't just, it doesn't... I thought biscotti too. I was talking with one of my coworkers and like, what would you do? And she's like, biscotti. I was like, I don't want to do biscotti on the, uh, the stream and the picture they use for it doesn't look like a biscotti. Like if we look at the recipe, um, mm -hmm. I believe they have a picture in the recipe. Let's see. Ah, you see in the top left corner there? That's the tooltip one for the coffee biscuit, and it doesn't look like biscotti. It just looks like Ew. a chocolate chip cookie. So I don't know. I think the wheat was a good addition. I think the problem is there's just not enough coffee in there to warrant calling it a coffee biscuit. I think it needs to either have increased amount of espresso powder Mm -hmm. or some other coffee element, like finely ground coffee beans or something like that. Go ahead. Uh, Taki's going to try one. Oh. Are we going to listen to our ancestors about how much espresso to put in? Is that the way to go? I think so. Honestly, if you, uh, I would taste the dough if you're making these at home. Ooh, May's in the kitchen. She thinks stuff's happening. Oh, my God. Hello there. You wanted to spread, huh? You've got 10 more Oh, that's true. Phantom makes the point like dunking it into coffee, not necessarily like the texture, more like original donuts. Yeah. Than but, but again, the tooltip says it's a uh, it's a, a biscuit that has a hint of coffee flavor to it. Mm. It's like a chocolate chip cookie. Right. Oh, and I want if you increase the espresso powder, would the dough dry out? No. The texture is amazing. It's nice and soft, right? And it has a good chew to it. But it just tastes like a chocolate chip cookie. Yeah, it's not something special. That's why I'm glad they were doing other ones, too. And these ones cooled off enough? Yes. So these are mine. Ooh. You'll notice that they have a little bit different Ooh. kind of chocolate chippiness to them. This, just the nature of them. So those are the textbook. These are these. The way that the um, coffee beans work, they like to sink down. Um, if you wanted these to have a little bit more chocolatey appearance to them, you could also just add chocolate chips to this recipe, um, either replacing some of the coffee beans or just adding more chocolate. Like, why not? Yeah, these ones are a little bit flat um, compared to these ones. Two reasons. One, I raced on my brown butter, if I let it cool all the way, I actually would have gotten a little bit more air incorporated, so there would have been a little bit more height to them. Um, but I didn't cool my butter, so it was basically these baked like vegetable oil cookies would. Um, and also, I don't think I chilled them as nearly as long as the other ones. Um, again, I'm trying to fit my stream within the allotted time and everything, so I, I rushed a little bit here and there, but um, the quality is still good. There's a you can always have variants depending on how much patience you have. I know if Crimson's still in the chat, he would be like, what patience? Um, but, <laughs> you know, if you don't have patience, they still come out good, look at that. So, cross section of these. Is that good? What, you should do like a, uh, a speed round, cooking speed round. Oh, how fast can I cut cookies? Mm hmm. I don't have the ingredients for it. Oh my gosh. 
you're crisp, you're chewy. You don't have a lot of coffee in the dough because I didn't put any coffee flavor in the dough. But as soon as you bite into any of the coffee beans, it's overwhelmingly coffee, which is great. Mm. The rest of the cookie is a nice accompaniment to it. It has a great toffee kind of sweet nutty flavor to it. It tastes like butterscotch. Mm. It's got a great crispiness to it. So would you say you prefer these so far to your other ones? Hands down. Mm. The texture of the other ones are really good, don't get me wrong. But I think that these are more appropriate for a level 76 cookie. Yeah. Chocolate covered coffee beans are the way to go. Taki's watching something, but I'll get her opinion on the cookie in a bit. Mm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These came out really good. I like it. Ready? And... Oh. My favorite part, you just go... I love it. So clean! No crumbs! It's beautiful. And then I want you to use a nice sharp knife. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's the question saying, is there a, like, proper, proper way to hold a knife? Yes, there is, actually. And I will show you in a second. Um... I feel like most people don't do. Yeah, there's a lot of knife safety that people do not follow. I'm going to try to cut left-handed here because I'm an idiot. Oh, that's actually... Yeah, that's very pretty. Okay, so holding a knife. You want to tuck your finger underneath here. A lot of people want to do this to stabilize a knife, but this really does nothing for you because this middle, this finger can't control the blade. So you want to tuck it underneath the bolster here. So not underneath the smell part, but under here. And then you want to do like slicing motions for majority of your knives because these are slicers. They're not um, cleavers. So pressing down isn't going to cut, but a slicing motion will. Your other mm. hands, you want to do a claw. So we don't want our fingers sprayed out because those can get chopped. So we curve them so that way whenever we are touching ingredients near our knife, our knuckles lock the knife from getting over closer to our fingers. And our thumb here, we want to tuck mm. it into the cave so it doesn't get its head chopped off. Who taught me what? I need to move these to my cooling rack somehow. Uh, Phantom asks, how do you manage a burnout during a tasting menu? Oh, during a tasting menu? Uh, if it's done well, the tasting menu should not burn you out. Um, but making sure that you have a beverage that is mild to help reset your palate, or even just asking for a cup of coffee will help you kind of um, reset your palate and uh, make it a little bit easier to try all the different foods. I 
Middle finger at the bolster and pinch. Like that? Tommy was always taught underneath it. That's pretty important. I guess I technically am pinching with my thumb. But it's like the side of my finger, not the tip of my finger that's uh, pinching. Granted, I learned from pastry instructors, not culinary instructors. They may have taught me something different. She's scrounging. She knows her job. And it's coming for those cookies. I heard you got cookies. What's that on your face? She had the time of her life. The other night, she was a full cookie thief. She stole the smallest little cookie and ran away like a bandit. Do you want to try them? Are they cool enough yet to try? It's going to have coffee flavor to it because that is only coffee in there. This is my favorite. You like them? Is it not too coffee eat? Oh they passed coffee. They passed talkies. Oh my gosh. Are well, they the best? They're good. They're not chocolate. Honestly, they don't need chocolate. They are sweet. They are buttery. They're still a little bit warm, so I'm guessing they get a little bit more flaky as they cool down. But they have mm -hmm. like a nice chew to them from the wheat. The coffee is not mm -hmm. overpowering because with the other one, the one I did for um, uh, that's like judged up and everything with the brown butter and everything, the coffee mm -hmm. is strong because you bite into a full coffee bean. This is dispersed, so it's a little bit more even throughout. Mm -hmm. It's crisp. Look at the cross section. Ooh. Can I request that we have both shortbreads and the other ones? Yeah, just like. Half and half. Possibly. I would have to do like half dozen of each. What, Phantom? I want both. No, these are not good. The coffee's not overwhelming. Do you want the rest? Huh? You want the rest? They are very good. You can see, um, you saw them as I was doing them, but you can see how they come out, how they've stiffened up as the cooling has finished. So they have a nice texture and shortbread to them. I'm willing to bet instead of doing a round pan, you could do a square pan and get like rectangles out of them mm. um, for baking. Or if you wanted to get them really small squares, uh, you could probably uh, use like a... Um, cupcake pan and bake them in the individual cupcake divots and then dock mm -hmm. those and just make sure it's a nice thin layer about as you can see i got about a half to quarter inch thickness oh i'm gonna cry this song's so good um you can see the docking on the cookie to help prevent it from rising too much so i think that there's a couple options for these and if you like them more chocolate Doing this shortbread with the coffee in it, you could make a chocolate ganache that you spread on top. Maybe put some coffee in there too to um, the coffee if you want more coffee. I feel like these make them a little bit more customizable and better for dunking. Because if you dunk this in coffee, it would stand up a lot more than the other cookies would. So of the three, which one would you say would be like, if you were to say coffee biscuit, which one screams coffee biscuit the most to you? This one. If I was ordering coffee biscuits from a bakery, I would say that I would expect these shortbreads. Mm. Because bi uh, biscuit does not scream chocolate chip cookie to me. Because whenever you talk about like English terms and whatnot, they use biscuit for cookie, but majority of their cookies aren't chocolate chip cookies. They're shortbreads or spritz cookies or Jamie Dodgers or other things like that. They're not mm -hmm. just a scooped cookie. They're different kinds of um, cookie than we usually have in America. So... Mm -hmm. 
I would definitely go for the shortbreads. Also, I think the shortbreads, surprisingly, are the easiest of these to make because it's very limited ingredients, and then you just throw it in a pan. Mm. It has a longer cook time, but it doesn't require all the scooping and everything else like that you have to do with other ones. Um, and I think they're more traditional to Norbrunt, you know? It yeah. Is not, it is not a uh, forgiving environment. <laughs> No, it is not. I mean, just look at these. Can you imagine cute little Reen and Gaia yes. enjoying their coffee biscuits and dunking them and having their little dates? Oh my yes. gosh, it'd be so cute. 10 out of 10. Yoshi P, change the icon in Final Fantasy XIV to a shortbread, please, and thank you. <laughs> uh, not that I don't like the other ones. The other ones were great. Whoever made this cookbook put a lot mm -hmm. of thought and uh, trial and error into it because... Like using the whole wheats, um, incorporating mm -hmm. espresso powder and everything else like that, making them more accessible recipes for the consumer base. All great mm -hmm. ideas. I think they did a fantastic job. But we may have level 80 chefs that also play Final Fantasy, so why don't we make it a little bit more challenging for them? Mm -hmm. So, uh, if anyway, uh, if no one else has any other questions, I think this is probably a good place to end the stream. Because we've tried everything and we're all good. Any last minute comments, concerns, questions? Comments, questions, concerns, wishes. Any answer, funny antidotes? Oh, hello, Pastry Devil. I miss you too. I miss everybody from uh, school. It's been a long time. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for coming. I'm, I'm really trying to fight crying because this song makes me cry every time because it's End of Heaven's Ward. And then also, like, I'm overwhelmed by the fact that I had so many friends that wanted to come watch me cook. So thank you guys so much. Uh, and if you like this stream and you like hearing from me and my goofy uh, FC mates and whatnot, all of them that were in the chat and Mira here as well, um, oh. I stream games weekly. We do Ukov and then uh, roulettes and uh, other stuff like that um, so come and check out my stream uh, it's a lot of fun we uh, 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 yeah basically all the <laughs> fun shenanigans that oh my gosh May is rolling in the grass oh May no I you're allergic uh, she's allergic I literally saw her reflection she's just rolling around in the grass oh and here she is she wants to come back inside <laughs> well with, with that um uh, hopefully I'll do another one of these again. Hopefully soon. Um, I'll figure out what recipe we're doing. Uh, and I'll shoot out uh, notifications so you all know. So you can check out next time. Uh, for now, uh, bye. And love you, mean it. And uh, um, check out Final Fantasy XIV online with a hot new expansion through Heavensward. Free trial. All that jazz. No cap on playtime. No cap on playtime.